Today we're going to show you how you can give your photos a more minimalistic look by incorporating negative space into your compositions. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Negative space allows you to solo your subject. It also creates a relaxed mood that really lets the photo breathe. It can serve to make your photo feel clean, or it can provoke a feeling of solitude. When used correctly, negative space can even become the subject of the entire photo. One of our favorite photographers who utilizes a lot of negative space is Max Winger. His use of negative space always creates striking images where the subject clearly pops. Using Max's work as inspiration, we're going to head out and try to capture some candid and posed photos using negative space. First thing we need to do is find a location that will give us plenty of open sky. Here in LA, we're going to head to the beach, but if you're landlocked, hills, open fields, or any area with distractionless backdrops will work. Even though we're shooting around 2 in the afternoon, some nice fog rolled in that provided a moody gray backdrop. This works perfectly for more solemn, minimalistic photos. If we had a beautiful golden sunset instead, we could still utilize negative space, but it would give our photos an entirely different look. Think about what type of light will reinforce the mood you want for your photos. The perspective from which you shoot is going to play a huge role in getting the right composition. We prefer getting low to shoot or placing our subject on a hill or higher plane. This will keep our background minimal and better isolate our subject from their surroundings. Alternatively, you can also shoot down on your subject from a higher vantage point if the ground is clear of distractions. As always, the right focal length will depend on your location, subject, and style. In some instances, a tighter focal length, like the 85mm, allowed us to find a subject at a distance and isolate them against a starkly minimal backdrop. We will also get better background separation from our subject with a tighter lens. However, to best capture this sprawling beach scene, we chose a 35mm lens to best capture the scene against a wide, monochromatic sky. You'll find that each type of focal length can help you achieve types of photos with lots of negative space, so experiment with what you have and find what you like best. For this style of photography, we tend to do a little more retouching than we generally would. We want to remove any remaining distractions from the photo to really reinforce our intent. Ideally, if you follow the tips from shooting, editing shouldn't be too bad. Since we always edit photos in Lightroom, we're going to go ahead and get each photo looking exactly how we want it by adding our preset, enabling lens corrections, adjusting white balance, and exposure. To do more intensive object removals, we'll use Photoshop. We'll just right click on the photo we want to touch up and choose Edit In Adobe Photoshop. Here we can use a combination of the clone stamp tool and healing brushes to remove any distractions. We can do the same thing for this photo too. Another thing you can try to emphasize the negative space is taking a horizontal photo and turning it into a vertical photo by extending the background. This works best on photos with a really flat background like this one. We'll go ahead and use the crop tool in Photoshop and set it to 4x5. We'll keep the entire width of the photo and just extend the crop above what we currently have. Now we can just select the blank area and hit Shift Delete or Shift Backspace on a PC. We'll choose Content Aware Fill and with any luck it'll do the heavy lifting for us. Now if there's a hard line along the seam, we can just use the healing brush to clean it up and we'll be good to go. Feel free to break composition rules where it makes sense. For example, this photo doesn't abide by any traditional rules of composition, but breaking those rules allowed us to create a feeling of vast, open sea, and solitude. If your subject has a pop of color, the eye will automatically be drawn towards it. This serves to direct viewers to your subject and further separates your subject from the background. If you have a lot of elements in your image, having your subject closest to your lens will further serve to direct the viewer's eye to your subject. My name is Rachel and I'm f years old. I like extreme sports and I'm looking for a guy who can build a beautiful website fast. If you don't use Squarespace, you can't be first place. What's up? My wife is gonna kill me for being here. Did that just say you don't use Squarespace? What's Squarespace? Next. I don't have time for anyone who doesn't have time for Squarespace's award-winning 24-hour customer support.
Did that just say SoundCloud rapper? Next. If he doesn't use Squarespace's beautiful custom templates, then he doesn't deserve this beautiful template. And also no SoundCloud rappers. Please tell me you use Squarespace. Use it? Girl, I married it. Recap. One, find a location with open sky. Beaches, fields, and hills can all work great for this. Two, flat light can help create a minimalistic look. More dynamic light will create more dimension and saturation. Three, shoot from a vantage point lower than your subject to help isolate them. Four, a tighter focal length will help eliminate foreground distractions, but a wider focal length can create more vast and dramatic photos. Five, remove any distractions in post-production. We hope this video inspires you to try out a new type of photography. So if you do, tag your photo Mango Street Minimal on Instagram so we can take a look. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and be sure to ring that notification bell so you don't miss out. And we'll see you next Monday.